Hey guys, Dev0406 here and today we will be looking at the strongest pets ever released in all of Adventure Quest as of 2nd November 2016 which was the time that this video is being made. Okay, first of all, this is my opinion only, solely based on my opinion. You can have a different opinion, it is fine with me. And I am uh, basing these, uh, the strength of these pets uh, based purely on damage. I am not focusing on any fancy effects that the pets might have such as daze or stun or what or whatever okay it is uh, purely on uh, damage basis overall how much damage can they dish out um, throughout the course of a battle and that is how I determine that they are the strongest like I said this is just my opinion you might have a different opinion do state down in the comments below if you disagree with me or if you do agree with me and I hope that this uh, video can serve as a guide to uh, new or even the old players who are looking for the best equipment or pets in the whole of Avenger Quest. Right, without further ado, let us get started. The very first one we'll be talking about uh, fire. Right, the best fire pet in the game, <coughs> in my opinion, is the Supreme Overlord's Reincarnation. Now, you can get this pet from the ruins of Elnafar, uh, Valley of Legends Quest. Uh, now, this is a very, very old pet already. But uh, it has kept up to the standards of today, uh, making it one of the strongest pets in the game in my opinion. <coughs> Why is that so? Um, first of all, it has an attack that has a chance to burn the monster. And um, after the monster is burnt, you will, the pet will do increased damage. Furthermore, the pet is Mastercraft and when you have the full set, uh, when you are wearing one of the set shields uh, and one of the set armors, the pet has a 20% chance to cast a healing spell on you. So that is why I feel that the Supreme Overlord's Reincarnation is the best fire pet in the, uh, in the whole game. Not only does it uh, deal quite a fair bit of damage, it has a chance to heal you if you are using the full set. And also, it also has a chance to burn the monster which makes it do increased damage and of course, the damage over time from the burn effect. Right, moving on for water. Okay, now the Mocklock War Ball, uh, War Ball, which you can get from the um, Frost Veil Gift Box 2012, is the best water pet in my opinion. Now there aren't many Mastercraft water pets. In fact, I think this is the only one that's at level 150. So this is why I picked it as the best pet in my opinion best water pet in my opinion. Now, um, you can click on the pet to switch it from uh, dealing normal damage to healing you and uh, really it's just a gimmick. It's not the best heal in the game but um, it is definitely better than uh, your standard water pets which are non-mastercrafted. So this is why I have picked the Mocklock War Ball to be the best water pet in the game. So if you have it, uh, don't sell it and if you don't, well, um, there are other water pets out there, but none are as good as the Mocklock War Ball. Moving on, we have Ice. Ice, uh, Nerf Kitten, the best Ice pet in the game. Now, um, the level 10 version, I think you can get from Arya's Pet Shop. Now, the higher level versions, you have to buy from the Guardian Shop, which means you must be a Guardian in order to get this uh, pet. I do not think it's Mastercraft, um, but uh, that's, that's not the point here. The point here is that this pet can either buff itself by increasing its damage and PTH on its um, 3 hit attack or it can nerf your opponent by giving it uh, elemental vulnerability and a reduction in their defenses with its uh, 1 hit attack. Now, this is really good which means uh, throughout the course of the battle if you're not switching pets, you're solely using this pet, it will deal more and more damage over time, it also help your character to do more damage over time because of the elemental vulnerability. Furthermore, you, uh, your character will also be able to land more hits on the monster because of uh, the Nerf Kitten being able to reduce the monster's defenses. And that is why I find that the Nerf Kitten is the best ice pack in the game. Moving on, Earth. Right, Earth, we have the Nerf Hit, and this is similar to the Nerf Kitten, okay? In fact, everything is exactly the same, I would say. Um, uh, it has a chance to nerf the monster to give it elemental vulnerability and a defense loss but the difference is that it cannot buff itself. 
um, apart from that, it's still a very solid Earth pet and you can... This pet, if I'm not wrong, it was available during April Fools, I think, or was it Grand Walk Festival, I can't really remember. But anyways, this is definitely the best Earth pet in the game in my opinion because of its ability to nerf the monster. Now moving on, we have Wind, which is Nerf Bad Lord. Now this monster is the equivalent, is the wind equivalent of um, nerfing. You can get this pet on April Fools, okay, April Fools 2008 to be precise. And uh, recently it has been updated to the level 150 version, and I'm very happy about that. Okay, this is the exact same thing as nerfing. You can nerf your opponents. Uh, give them a elemental vulnerability status on top of that you also reduce the opponent's uh, defenses but uh, similar to nerf it, it does not it is unable to buff itself like nerf kitten so moving on energy right for energy again this is a perma permanent rare okay yeah, and you can get this pet from your uh, gift box uh, from the 2014 uh, frost veil gift box and if you have it obviously want to sell it. Why is it the best pet in the game? It is because it has a 8% chance to deal 162.5% damage which means um, every time the pet attacks it has a small chance to deal extra 62.5% damage. That is actually quite significant even though the chance is quite low and there aren't really many other energy uh, pets out there which can match up to the damage output of the pixel stalker which is why I picked it as best energy pet in Avenger Quest. Right, moving on, we have the Light Pet. Now, this pet uh, is also the best healing pet in the game, in my opinion. So, uh, this is definitely, um, I would say, a 3 in 1 pet, and you'll see why. Right, the pet I picked for this is none other than Fairy Godmother G, updated one, the updated level 150 version, okay. Now, it compresses 3 different, um, can call it utility skills or whatever it can do light damage so that makes it a light pet already it can heal your hp and it can heal your mp now of course there are other stronger healing pets out there like retro 3dg of course uh, that will heal your hp more and there are pets like soul luna which can heal your mp more but um i really prefer the fairy godmother g over the other two because this pet only takes up one slot while filling, while filling in three different uh, utility users. It can heal your HP, it can heal your MP, and it can do light damage. And that is why I find that this is the best light and healing pet in the game, simply because of its uh, ability to compress like all, both different forms of healing and also the ability to do light damage. Okay, you can find this in the Guardian Shop, and none of the pets I mentioned uh, before requires tokens. So yeah. And this is not rare, so you can still get it if you're a guardian. Definitely one of the best pets in the game, in my opinion. Right, moving on, we have Darkness. For Darkness, it'll be Eternal Twilight's Harbinger. You can get this from the same quest as the Supreme Overlord's Reincarnation, except this is the quest for the Twilight set instead of the uh, Valley of Legend or something like that. Right. Anyways, uh, this pet, other than its ability to deal uh, good darkness damage, it also has a chance to blind your enemies, and that means that your your opponents, um, if it blinds your opponents, your opponents have a lesser chance to hit you, and uh, that is why it makes it such a good darkness pet. There aren't really many darkness pets, uh, Mastercraft darkness pets out there that actually have such a good um, utility for its Mastercraft, so this is why I think Eternal Twilight's Harbinger as the best darkness pet in the game. Now, last but not least, we'll move on to utility pets. Now, these pets uh, fill a niche role. Uh, they might not necessarily be doing the most damage or are the strongest uh, in terms of damage or skills, whatever, but uh, they are useful when it comes to uh, certain cases. And if you have, if you um, choose to use a compression pet instead of any of the uh, 8 pets which I mentioned above, you can have an uh, extra slot to uh, for these, uh, for one of these or one or more of these utility pets uh, depending on your build and playstyle. The first one we have Dunamis, okay, this 
uh, pet loses your key damage, so if you're a warrior or a hybrid, then uh, you'll definitely want this pet. Okay, there's also a guest version available for you, but this is a pet video, so we won't talk about that. Okay, so this pet, uh, it does not attack your opponents. Instead, it gives you a damage boost to your uh, mini attacks. So, warriors and hybrids, you definitely want to uh, get this pet in your inventory if you can. Now, uh, unfortunately, you do have to spend real money to get this here to buy the 20,000 set token package to uh, get the Dunami's pet. Right, moving on, we have Lenda. Okay, this is obviously the range version of Dunami's, so if you are a ranger, you want Tunda instead of Dunami's. And this uh, guy boosts your range attack damage instead of your mini uh, weapon damage. And again, uh, you have to buy the 20,000 set token package in order to get it. Last but not least, we have the original Polala. Um, Polala, you can get this from the Golden Gift Box Ultra Rare Shop. I think it's a, it's permanently in the Ultra Rare Shop, so uh, there's really no rush to get it. Okay, you can uh, buy one of the 20,000 Z token packages above for either Dunamis or Tunda, and then uh, spend it on Golden Gift Boxes to get Polala. Right, Polala, um, similar to the two before, except it boosts uh, magic damage instead. And Polala is actually the original uh, sort of damage boosting pet. Uh, it came out way before Dunamis and Tunda, and uh, really, Polala is one of the more iconic pets in the whole of Adventure Quest, and I am glad that we have finally uh, buffed it up to uh, level 150 version uh, to make it still. Uh, Good to use in today's meta. So that's it, guys. That's my take on today on uh, the strongest pets in Adventure Quest as of 2nd November 2016. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Leave it down in the comments below. And I hope this has, this guy has helped you on uh, how to pick uh, better get better pets for your character in the game. So yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, be sure to give it a thumbs up and do subscribe for more future such content. Till the next time, peace out.